Hi, my name is Caleb and welcome to my masterclass. I am the head of production at a church up in the Midlands in Derby called St. Werburgh's. Part of the mission of St. Werburgh's is to build an authentic community. Doing what I do from the audio to the visuals to broadcast gives me and my team a sense of purpose because we know that we are adding value to that mission. We are actually impacting people in the building and having an impact with people online in helping them form those authentic communities. My love for video and audio in general started quite young. I studied uh, did a degree in it and always thought I would end up just being a person sat in a studio recording a few albums and hopefully making some money off it. I had moved to Derby and found this house of worship um, and found that they really value their level of production and from that it grew into being a full-time role. We stream all of our services, any special events that happen. It brings people into the building when people can't be there. I think it's really important that people do feel part of it and not separated by a screen. I had someone come up and tell me that it gave them a sense of belonging um, and it does make me feel quite proud of what I do. St. Werbergs have a PTZ multi-angled setup with one person we can run our whole production, our whole camera setup and get really good results. I used the CRN500 as camera A and I placed it at the centre at the back of the building. That gives us a really good view of the people, the audience, the congregation in front. If we do cut to a wide, it almost gives people a bird's eye view of what's happening in the building. The CIN500 works really well in low light, so when I pull out and have a really wide angle, um, even though it's just the people on stage, the subjects on stage that are lit, there is no loss to picture quality. A feature of the CIN500 is the dual pixel CMOS autofocus, which I have really come to rely on. One of the reasons why I placed the CIN300 stage right is because I wanted people to be able to be up close to the action. It opens up the possibility of us doing close-ups to each subject on stage from the drummer to the guitarist to, to the keyboardist while being able to cut to our primary camera A. With camera C being a camcorder, the XA65, I placed it stage left. What that gives us is a wide static shot. We usually use it as a fallback, so if something does go wrong, or for the simple reason if someone does walk in front of one of our PTZs, we immediately cut to our static cam. Um, it also gives us the option to have a camera operator take it off a stand and move about. The similarities between the XA65 and the CRN300 make them a brilliant match. The great thing about this setup is all the PTZ cameras can be controlled um, by one person using the RCIP100 controller, which gives them access to all of the features of the camera and any presets that they have set. Our PTZ camera is connected via Ethernet, ideally a Cat5e or higher, which goes into a network switch which sits somewhere in the building, usually by the production desk and from that network switch is connected into our computer, which runs a whole host of softwares, but the main one that we use is vMix. Um, we bring all of our video over the NDI network into vMix, where we mix all of the video, um, marry it with the audio that is coming from the sound desk and is broadcast from there. All of our video runs over the NDI network and that has inherent latency. Because of the latency, we make sure to delay the audio coming in from the sound desk into our video mixing station. One way of doing that is by having a person stand in front of the camera and clap. Um, and we make sure that the video and the audio is synced up. Because the XA65 doesn't output NDI natively, I use an NDI encoder 
to run a HDMI output from the camera to the encoder over the network and ingest it into our computer and send it out. One of the features we use twice a lot is the trace function on our PTZ cameras. Um, it is primarily telling the camera almost as if it's a dance routine to move from point A to point B. You record the motion and you have it recorded on the controller and every time you need it, you hit execute and it does it for you. While you execute a trace function, you can be quite creative with how you cut to that shot. Um, I personally like to cut midway through its trace because then it, I think it really adds almost a sense of natural motion to the shot and I think it does bring, bring that shot to life. I personally think it gives them the best seat in the house and I think that uh, having these options really opens up um, the possibilities of what we can do with the PTZ camera. One of the other features we have on our PTZs is the preset function. For example, if camera A is on the drummer um, and I want camera B to be on the keyboard is in my next shot, but it is on a wide, I can recall preset three and that immediately goes as fast as it can. And I cut to camera B immediately. So it, it does save you a lot of time when you're trying to handle three or four cameras simultaneously. I usually try to have, um, say, presets of close-ups of each subject on stage so that when I really need it or if something does go wrong with camera A or camera C, I can always cut to camera B preset 3 and it, it goes to it without me having to physically move the joystick um, and adjust the zoom at that time. Three reasons why I love using a PTZ camera. Number one is its small form factor. It won't be a hindrance to people in, in the building, but it also opens up a door to people online. The second reason, it can be powered by PoE. So if your switch is PoE enabled, I would encourage you to use that because it clears up wires and it saves you from running extra wires to the actual camera. The third reason, it can be operated by one person using the RCIP100 controller that Canon supplies. Finding PTZ cameras over the network during setup can be challenging. The Canon camera search tool helps me with that problem. One of the mistakes I made was forgetting to activate the PT and all that does is it enables the joystick to give you a full range of motions on the camera. One of the things I found helpful is using the web interface to set presets and then using the controller to execute those presets. I found it simplified my workflow and made life easier.